Hi friends, today we are going to discuss the 2003 film Gothica. <laughs> a patient at a psychiatric hospital for criminals tells psychiatrist Dr. Miranda Gray about her fire-related visions. Chloe took the life of her stepfather, who did terrible things to her. As the patient began to behave violently, she was subdued and taken away. For Miranda Gray, it was the most normal day at work. She stopped by to see her supervisor, Phil Parsons, and then her colleague and husband, Douglas Gray. They discussed the treatment of Chloe, who constantly claims that the devil comes to her cell. They were interrupted by Dr. Pete Graham. Douglas was just leaving. Pete offered Miranda to lunch, but she politely declined. At work, Miranda stayed up late filling out case histories. A thunderstorm knocked out the power generator. To get her mind off things, Miranda decided to go for a swim in the pool, and then after saying goodbye to the security guard, she went to the parking lot. She was frightened by Pete, who came up behind her and started complaining about another bad date. He walked Miranda to her car, intending to follow. But rain didn't let up. At the intersection, Pete and Miranda parted ways. The road ahead was blocked. Sheriff Ryan said that there was a failure on the highway, so she'd have to take a detour across the bridge. Miranda called the husband, saying she would be home soon. Suddenly the connection cut out, and a girl appeared out of nowhere on the road. Miranda barely had time to swerve, her car skidded to the side of the road. After getting out of the car, Miranda approached the drenched stranger to help, but at one point the girl just burst into flames. In the next scene we see Miranda wake up. She was disoriented, but soon realized that she was in one of the cells of the psychiatric hospital where she works. Dr. Graham came in, and Miranda demanded an explanation in a rather aggressive manner. An orderly tried to subdue her. Pete asked to leave them alone and said that he had gotten permission from the court to be her attending physician, even though that wasn't the right thing to do. It turned out that Miranda had been here for three days, having been admitted in a state of acute seizure followed by catatonia. Miranda asked Pete to call her husband in, then Dr. Graham told her to recall the past events. Miranda's last memory was of arriving home. Douglas was sitting on the couch. She also remembered the girl. Miranda was surprised that Pete was talking about Douglas in the past tense, and he was forced to admit that she had taken her own husband's life. Miranda started screaming and fighting, not believing this wild story. Pete called the orderly and the nurse, who gave her a shot. Miranda fell asleep, strange images flashed in her head. Upon awakening, she was taken to the other patients. Everyone was very surprised to see the former doctor among the psychos. Chloe came up to Miranda and told her that now she would know what it was like to be thought crazy. And the more she tries to prove otherwise, the crazier she'll seem. Before she left, Chloe gave her a newspaper clipping that talked about the tragic incident with Dr. Douglas Gray and his wife. At night, Miranda awoke in her cell in a cold sweat. She heard noises, the glass fogged up by itself, and the words, not alone, appeared on it. Miranda continued to feel a foreign presence. She tried to convince herself it was just a nightmare. In the morning, a nurse named Iron came to her with pills. Then Miranda was taken to the shower. She was to wash up with the other dangerous patients. At one point, she heard someone calling her crazy. The faces around were distorted, and the image of the same girl who had carved the inscription on Miranda's arm appeared among the patients. The patients scattered in fear, and Miranda was left lying on the floor. Later, the hospital staff bandaged her arm, not understanding how she had injured herself. Pete did the examination. Miranda claimed that she didn't do it herself, she didn't know what was going on, and suddenly asked Pete if they had an affair, because the memory lapses made her unsure of her own memories. Pete replied that nothing had happened between them, but he wished it had. Miranda continued to insist that she hadn't lost her mind. While walking, she called out to her former boss, Phil, and through the bars asked to change her attending position, but he refused the request. Miranda has a lawyer friend, Teddy Howard, coming to see her. The court hearing is next week. All the evidence against Miranda seems very strong. According to the lawyer, proving her insanity is the only chance to save her from jail. Sheriff Ryan, Douglas' best friend, also wanted to talk to Miranda. Bob was shocked by what had happened, for Douglas loved his wife more than life. In a burst of emotion, the sheriff showed Miranda the gruesome crime scene photos. Bob was asked to leave because he was no longer in control of himself. Miranda couldn't believe she'd done this, the cuts on her arms starting to bleed. The perpetrator had left the same writing on the wall of their house. In the cell, the staff had to tie her up. In the dream, Miranda saw fragmentary memories. She picked up an axe and came to the husband. It was as if something had possessed her. Pete brought Miranda to Phil. She admitted that she was there when it happened, but not alone. Phil and Pete assured her that they would help her and do everything they could. Suddenly, Miranda saw a picture of the girl from the bridge. Pete said it was his daughter, Rachel, who was no longer alive. At night, Footprints appeared on the floor. 
Miranda didn't believe in ghosts but she said out loud that if Rachel really was here, she would let her out of the cell now. Surprisingly, the door opened. Miranda got out of the cell by lurking, then she stole a screwdriver from the guard, broke the glass on the door, and managed to break into Pete's office room. She managed to find information on the internet about Rachel, who had voluntarily left the life. Rachel appeared on the security cameras, located in her room with single cells. Grabbing the newspaper clipping, Miranda ran. In the hallway, she peeked into closed cell, where there was a stranger with an anima sola tattoo. Miranda began to call for help in a panic, and the orderly subdued her. Sue Pete came to her, assuring her that Chloe was fine. Miranda kept insisting that she'd seen Rachel. Pete didn't want to hear it anymore. Before he left, he informed Miranda that she would be temporarily transferred to a jail cell because of light problems. During the walk, Miranda approached Chloe, apologizing for not believing her. They embraced. During the night shift, Iron went out for coffee. The light began to flicker, Miranda walked to the door, unaware that Rachel was behind her. Then an unknowing force began hurling Miranda around the cell. The guards saw this, thinking that Dr. Gray wanted to hurt herself. In the cell, the nurse and the guard caught a scary sight. Miranda attacked them and fled. The other guards rushed after her. Fleeing the pursuit, Miranda decided to wait in the pool, seeing Rachel next to her again. In the end, Dr. Gray went unnoticed. On her way out, Miranda was seen by the security guard she knew and would not give her away. He gave her the keys to his car and told to run. So Miranda did. Rachel was by her side the whole time. After driving across the highway and nearly colliding with a truck, Miranda still lost control. She didn't understand what Rachel wanted her to do. Miranda arrived at their house, the lights invitingly on. Inside, it was as if she had gone back in time, seeing herself walking with the axe in her hand straight toward her husband, after which she took his life. There were traces of this gruesome crime all over the house. When it was over, Miranda took a bath, the water red with blood. She wasn't in control of her body, Rachel was. Miranda cried helplessly as she stared at the pictures of her and Douglas' at happy family life. As Miranda looked at one of the pictures, it hit her, and she went to their country house. The first thing she did was look around the territory. In the barn, Miranda found the tapes, and then she went down to the basement. There she stumbled upon a camera and a large bed with chains and traces of something horrible. In the locker were various potent medicines. Miranda watched a recording of Douglas bullying a girl. Hearing sounds upstairs, Miranda picked up a sharp object and went to check what's wrong. Sheriff Ryan attacked her but didn't have time to do anything because they saw an injured girl screaming for help. It turned out that her name was Tracy and she had been missing for two weeks. The case caused a stir in the press. Bob Ryan and everyone else did not understand how Miranda found out about the girl, but the fact remained that she had saved her life. Phil came over to Miranda. He couldn't believe what Douglas was doing. Neither could Miranda understand how they could have been so blind. Rachel had most likely been one of Douglas's victims, and everyone thought she voluntarily passed away. Phil confessed that after the daughter was gone, he kept having the same dream. Rachel was on fire. Miranda called Pete to share her crazy speculation about the anima sola tattoo. But Pete advised her to stop because the public was just beginning to take her seriously. In his office room, after some hesitation, he decided to search the internet for information about anima sola. This tattoo means a lonely burning soul. As Miranda had requested, she was arranged to meet Bob Ryan. Miranda believes that Douglas didn't act alone because that's what Rachel was trying to tell her. Ryan stated that he believed her and asked her to describe a psychiatric profile of the alleged perpetrator. Most likely in normal life, he appears to be a normal person and is an old friend of Douglas's. It all started with the fact that he may have liked to torture animals. Now the accomplice is probably frantically trying to cover the tracks. Logically, he should have returned to the farm to get rid of their latest victim. Ryan realized that Miranda was hinting at him. After saying that he never enjoyed torturing animals, Bob attacked Miranda. Under his shirt, she saw a tattoo of Annie Masola. A struggle ensued between them. Ryan tried to give Miranda a sedative shot, but light suddenly flickered. Taking advantage of this, Miranda intercepted the syringe, injected the sheriff, and fled, lurking. While searching for the victim, Ryan admitted that Rachel was far from the first. He and Douglas had acted together from the beginning. Noticing a shadow, the sheriff went in the direction of it, but it wasn't Miranda he saw, it was Rachel. Bob fired a shot, but it went through the girl and into the appliances. There was an explosion and Ryan was engulfed in flames. Pete came running in, apologizing for his lack of trust. The events then take us one year into the future. Chloe and Miranda are walking through town. Chloe is about to leave and misses her train. They say goodbye before they part. On their way back, Miranda sees a boy on the road and realizes she hasn't stopped seeing ghosts. Now the boy Tim has been reported missing. 